Hi friends, hello, happy Friday. Hi, it's Lisa Hetrick, welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. I'm super excited to be here today. Whoosh, I have a really, really fun card project today that we're gonna do. It's been a big week with stamp set releases. Um, I've had my brand new stamp set with Gina K Designs released this week called Spring and Bloom. We're gonna use that today. I'm gonna mash it up with two other stamp sets and we're going to get a little artsy pantsy. We're gonna get a little artsy pantsy in this one. This card is gonna be, is chock full of like watercolor techniques, but also layering techniques. We're gonna have some fun today. I see people popping in. Um, and I'm just gonna give a shout out to every, hey Dawn, so Dawn's popped in. I got your email Dawn, I will email you back. Okay, Cherie's popped in, Lisa's popped in. She's looking forward to learning and just getting started with watercolor. Cool, I have a ton of stuff on this channel for you. Dawn's here, Gloria's here, and TJ's here. Super fun, okay. All right, friends, we're gonna have a ton of fun today. We're gonna dive right in because we are going to do a bit of emboss resist techniques. Now, we've done this technique about two lives ago. It was this technique that we did. Okay, I'm just gonna head to the down camera so that we can take a peek at those things. So, we, I released this card this week and whoa, my goodness, I got a ton of direct messages and emails about it. Um, and this is the technique that we did about two, um, two lives ago. It's that emboss resist with watercolor. And I did that with this um, from the Spring and Bloom stand set. So we're going to do a little bit of that today. We're going to talk about color inspiration. I've got a lot of things I want to chat up, chat you up with today. So, ah. Uh, Work is tough. I know, Amy. I see Kathy popping in, Catherine popping in. Okay, all of the all of the supplies that I'm using today are linked down below in the description here in YouTube. If you're watching over on Facebook, and I see we do have some friends on Facebook. Hi, Pamela. Um, the description's not there. It doesn't let me add it until afterwards. It's bizarre. But anyway, that will all be there. But all the supplies. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough. So here's the Spring and Bloom stamp set. I'm going to be using this big honkin' bloom here that is inspired by a crocus, but today, the way we're going to do it, it's going to be more like a parrot tulip. We're using the die cut to the postage stamp die. We're going to be using these three really fun layering elements in this set. And Beautiful Things, Speak Beautiful Things, is back in stock. Back in stock. I know it took a bit. This is my most recent release. It's back in stock. We're going to be using this whooshy watercolor um, brush stroke for a background. And Beautiful Moments is one of the recent sets. Now, I lost this sentiment and then I found it yesterday. It was stuck to another stamp set. So it was obviously, obviously telling me that it needed to be in today's card. So I'm bringing it in. It was obviously telling me, right? Okay, now, like I said, I've got some Gina K white cardstock that I cut out in that postage stamp. We're gonna be doing some stamping. I love this postage stamp look and feel. It's a little more rectangular instead of square. It's also a little more wonky. It's got like some wonky elements to it that make it super fun. I have already pre-cut the Be Gentle with yourself. We're gonna be using that and I'm using innocent pink cardstock today from Gina K. It's cut to an A2 size. All right, here's the card inspiration for today. All these super fun layers, getting really super artsy um, with the layers and the tone on tone colors and a lot of splatter. So let me just go ahead and pop that over here. Now, the watercolor paper that I'm using is Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. It's the paper that I use for all of my paper crafting projects. It's cold press, it's 100% cotton. I really like it for these paper crafting projects. So um, if you've been watching me many times and many, I see everybody in here um, 
has watched me before, I kind of talk about this paper a lot. So, okay, now we're going to get started. Oh, first, I want to show you, I'm going to talk a little bit about color inspiration and parrot tulips, okay? And using oranges and pinks and how they work so well together. And I love them. But I want to bring in this book. So I just got this book called The Color of Roses. It is brand new. Um, I saw it the, I forgot her name already. Um, and I shouldn't have because I have all of her books too. On Instagram, Florette, F-L-O-R-E-T. She is an amazing flower farmer, just beautiful. She was talking about this book. And I just had to have it by Danielle Hahn. And she is a rose farmer. But what I really loved about this book was not only that I want to paint these beautiful roses. Um, I've tried to grow roses. I'm not really, I haven't been that great at growing them. But what I really love is the books organized by color. Like the roses that she grows are organized by color. But look at this page. Look at those pinks and those oranges. This book was totally the inspiration for today's color card combination. And I love that, how you can look at inspiration. Um, and I would encourage you to do that. Like look at inspiration, color inspiration, and see how you can pull that into your projects. But look at that beautiful color. Oh, it's stunning. Anyway, I'm obsessed with the book. So I've been reading it. So... Okay, we're going to get started, and remember, you can ask questions along the way. I will see them in the chat, um, and we'll go from there. Oh, a couple other things. I've got my, I've got some glue, and I've got some of the sequins. They're all listed below, and I didn't even go through the ink, so sorry about that. I got a little obsessed with the colors. So I'm using Innocent Pink, Wild Dandelion, Tangerine Twist, passionate pink. So I've got lots of pinks and oranges. I've got obsidian amalgam and I also have the embossing ink. I've already pre-embossed the big honkin' parrot tulip that we're going to do the wet and wet technique. I've already pre-embossed this so that you wouldn't have to hear my um, embossing tool. So hello! I see... It looks like Craft and Grandma. I'm new here. That is beautiful. Thank you. Okay, colors. Let's talk about my watercolors that I'm going to be using today. And I'm actually, I'm totally nerding out today on a bunch of different things. I have um, some Da Vinci watercolors. I've been using them quite a bit lately. I love Da Vinci watercolors. Oops, got a little something in there. This is a little portable set that I have um and I just wanted to kind of show you what the portable painter set looks like. This is just so fun. Um, it comes like this. Let me close it up. It comes like this. The whole thing goes like this. I'm, I am nerding out a little bit. This wasn't really supposed to be part of the tutorial. The whole thing comes like this. Now, I have several of these that I can take on the go, you know, um, and they're great for like when you go on vacation to hold your your um, your paints. But I had a bunch of Da Vinci tube paints that I wanted to put into a special set. So that's what I did with this portable painter. So it opens up like this. How freaking cool is this? It's just so cool. It goes like this um, on the side so you can fill it up with water. And it sits upright. It's just so clever and fun. And you can put water in it. You could put, you know, your brushes. And then you have this where you can, um, it'll hold your brushes. Like if you put it here. But anyway, I've used, a, I have a couple of different ones of these. And I've used these before. So Dawn just asked, where can you get this? I know that I didn't link it down below in the description. But you can go to PortablePainter.com, and I'll add it for everyone um, so that you know. But you can also go to Amazon and get it, um, the Portable Painter uh, 
gentleman who invented it. He also sells on Amazon. And it's just really compact, cute, well-engineered, just super fun. And I was playing with it this week, so I thought I would share it with you. Anyway, nerd time. Nerding out time. Okay, so we're going to start with some pinks and oranges. And we're going to do the wet into wet technique. So I want to show you, I've got this orange. Let's give my... Let's give everything a little mist of water. Okay. I'm going to start off with some oranges. I've got this color orange. And I'm going to use, you can see, Permanent Rose, which is my third color right here. Permanent Rose across all... Oh, I grabbed the wrong color. That's... That's alizarin gold. Anyway, that's a beautiful color. It's a beautiful orange. Let's take a peek at it. We might use it a little bit. Way to go, Elise. Can't even read my own chart. All right, here's Permanent Rose. I love Permanent Rose. Permanent Rose is a very common name across a lot of watercolor brands. Da Vinci is one of my favorites. Paul Rubens is another one of my favorites. I mean, I pretty much love every Permanent Rose that I've seen out there. Now those colors are just gorgeous. So let's take a look at our color inspiration, right? So here's our color inspiration. And one of the ways you can try to match up your colors is to take your little swatch to it and see if you've created what you're trying to create. And I think those two colors are perfect. Perfect for it. Okay. So let's go in. We're going to take a peek. I'm loving those colors. Look at that gold color. We're going to use a little bit of that too. All right, let's go in. We're going to do the technique that I'm going to share today are two techniques. We are doing the emboss resist with the watercolor and that gives us that dreamy, dreamy look and feel. But we are going to do... Um, we're going to do some wet into wet. So what I'm going to first, I'm going to do, I've got some water here. It's already getting tinged a little bit uh, pink. I'm looking at pink and thinking yellow. But anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to take water over the entire thing. And I'm my brush is wet, the paper is dry, and I'm just getting the whole thing wet. Now, I'm not so worried about the fact that I'm going out outside the lines. I'm not worried about it because I'm going to be cutting this out. I'm going to come in with a little bit of the permanent rose. Let's get some down here. Love that permanent rose. The other reason why I like this little palette is that it fits really nicely on the... Um, Oh, I don't want to do the yellow. I'm going to do the orange first. Fits really nicely in the camera. Okay. My brush, cleaning off my brush, and I'm just going to drop in some of that orange all around. Except for down here, where the, where the, um, where the stem is going to be. Thank you, Gloria. It's, yes. Friends, it's called the portable painter. The portable painter. Portable painter. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. And I might need to bring in a heat tool so that we can just kind of speed up this process a little bit with the drying. So let me grab that real quick. Thought I had it. Sorry about that. Thought I grabbed it. Usually it's sitting right next to me. But it wasn't. So let's just go ahead and... Okay, now I'm just going to just zap this a little bit just to dry it. And if you have, let's see how this all this little extra wetness, I can pat that off. So I'm just getting this first layer in of dreamy, dreamy color. I'm going to come in. I've got a little bit of sap green. So maybe I don't have sap green. Yeah, I do. Right here. 
so this is sap green this is denise's green these two greens are really great greens Denise's Green is just the name, one of the names. It's someone that they worked with. Her name is Denise Soden to help um, create a really interesting color, color mix. All right, I'm going to drop some of those greens right here. And I happen to really like that Denise's Green. It's got a little bit of um, really, really nice beautiful green. Just tap a little bit of that off. Now this whole thing is like super wet, right? Wet into wet. But that orange, let's just dry this part right here. Okay. That orange, so we're getting, we're kind of super artsy. I'm not being very precise in my water coloring here. I did a complete wet wash and just dropped in that orange and let it do its thing. And what we've got is more of like a coral-like orange color because that color, the orange, remember, with your colors, you don't need a ton of watercolor. You don't need a ton of watercolor at all. You can Now, I say that, but I have so much watercolor. You don't need, if you're just getting started, you don't need to invest in a big honk instead of 48 if you don't want to. You really only need a very small handful of colors because you can get a lot of different variations of that color by adding water. So we've got full strength and then the more water I add, we're down to what I call skim milk. But look at that beautiful color. You get more of that coral like color from that orange. So you're able to get quite a bit of differences in that color just by going adding water okay so super fun and I know I've talked about that quite a bit but for our paper crafting and our stamping projects this process of doing layers of color and doing the um, wet into wet really allows us to get a lot of different kinds of colors going now I'm going to come in my paper is dry my brush is wet I'm going to pick up some of that orange you can see right here it is juicy juice what I'm going to do is clean off my brush add a little bit more water so I'm getting a consistency here of um, probably two percent like a two percent milk um, and I'm going to come in up against those lines of where I was before, just right up against that embossed line. Clean off my brush, and right now I'm just layering in color. Now, the brushes that I have, I've got a detail brush, this is a Princeton round, and this is a number six silver black velvet. These black velvet brushes hold a lot of water, so I have to keep that in mind. Um, because and really dry them out a little bit. So I'm just adding a little bit of that orange in up against the lines where my resist is. And I'm not like being super precise here at all. Just adding, cleaned off my brush, adding some of that color, woohoo, and then just using what's there and pulling it down. Now, if you can't see your lines, you can always go right to the edge, add a little color on the outer side. You can see how that line's starting to pop. And don't worry about what you got going on out here on the outer edge because it's going to fade away. We're cutting it out. Okay, just come in. I'm going to add a little bit of this. So that was like a 2% milk. More water, less pigment. You can see I'm building up my colors very slowly. And when you do this, it's called glazing or layering. I call it layering. It's a good way to remember it. It's a lot of fancy words in art, right? But we don't always have to, I like to break them down so it makes sense to you. So we're starting to see the shape of that parrot tulip coming forward, coming forward. 
Um, hi, Sue. She's got to go. Her son and her grandson just popped over. How exciting. Family first, always. Okay. So I've got this layer of orange in. And you're going to resist. See, like, just taking a wet brush and just kind of blending those colors a little bit. Now I'm going to come in. The paper is still a little bit wet. I'm going to come in with some of that permanent rose, but more at a full strength. So this is not as much water on my brush and a lot more pigment. So you can see that the color is a lot more intense than that orange. And I'm going to focus that right down in the smaller areas down here. And there's where the paper is wet, you can see it's starting to move a little bit. Where the paper is dry, it's just staying exactly where it is. I'm going to move it. I'm going to add some water. I need my little paper towel. Here we go. I'm going to add some water. This card tutorial is kind of turning into a big watercolor tutorial. Hope you all don't mind. Sometimes the project that we create together to me isn't as important as giving you the value of teaching you the watercolor lessons. See how I'm pulling that color a little bit over that line? Let's see if we need to come in just a little bit more. Let's zoom in. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get a quick drink. It feels a little blurry to me. Let's pop out just a smidge. A little techie. There we go. I think that's good. Okay. See how my brush is clean. And I'm just going to coax some of that pink color up. I've got quite a bit of it. See how intense it is? So mashed up with that orange, it's really... Oh, I just love it. I just love how it's coming together. See that little bit? See how it went? Shwoosh. Really love that. Now, do you need to use Da Vinci paints? No, you don't. You can use whatever you have in your stock, in your stash. You're just going to grab a pink and an orange. Oh, thank you, don't, thank you, Catherine. Don't mind at all. I actually appreciate it. Yeah, I, there are, I have approached my card tutorials a lot different. We do eventually make the card but I really my superpower friends is teaching you techniques and trying to break them down into smaller bites so that you can try it out on your own at home and just demystifying this watercolor so the cool thing about the emboss resist is that we get that illusion of that flower and it's super, super dreamy, right? It is super dreamy in this sample, but adding the watercolor and letting it kind of do its thing, the water, the embossing edges kind of act as a little um, barrier to the river of watercolor. It doesn't really allow them to go past that edge, which makes it kind of fun and also gives you that artsy fartsy technique that's artsy pants technique and look and feel in your project and you've got a little bit more control over it a lot more control over it okay i'm going to come in now we're going to come in with some oranges we've over here we had like a skim milk i'm going to come in with more of like a hundred percent um whole milky kind of look and feel. Ah, Dawn said, Dawn just shared, this is really pretty. Can't wait to get my order from Gina K. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I'm coming in and I'm starting back at the top again and you can see, okay, we're in the, we're in the scary middle of the project right now, adding color, the scary middle where it's like, uh Oh, what did she just do? What did she just do? That looks like a hot mess. I've just added another layer, friends. Okay. So, and I added a pretty intense layer. So I'm going to clean my brush really good here and just 
Ooh, just take off some of that water if it feels too much like too much water and I'm going to use that color and just kind of blend it out blend it to the edge of my pinks just blend it out I'm going to go over the line just a little bit you can see just so that that line pops and I'm going to blend that out too so that it that just kind of fades away now if I get too much I'm going to just use my brush clean brush and lift it up and away and I'm able to take away that color okay I am working a little bit fast here because I don't want this to dry I'm going to go out around that outer edge so that we can see turning my project around using my brush out here just to clean water just blending that out <laughs> I see you all chatting in the chat chat. That's fun. I love that. I love that sharing ideas. Now, I have that little tiny piece over here that I kind of had forgotten about. So let's just go ahead and add a little bit of something there. Now, I'm going to come around here. i got a little tip right here. I want to add a little bit of color to intensify that. Bring that down. This is starting to dry over here, so I really need to go. So it's a back and forth kind of thing. Cleaning your brush, making sure it is just wet with water and using what you have here and pulling it down. And that gradual effect, going over that line just a little bit, helps create that dimension. I'm just kind of going over this line a little bit. Oh, I'm really digging this. Now, do you see how the luminosity has started to happen? We're starting to get that luminous quality of the watercolor coming through because we've done like three layers here. You also can see some granulation, like those little tiny dots. That's where the pigment is separating in the color. You can see it right here in that permanent rose. I can push that out just a little bit resist when you have this happen resist the urge to take your brush and smoothie blend resist the urge to do that and the reason is because the granulation you can see the granulation between that orange and that pink the the granulation helps create a lot of extra texture I'm just going to take my brush and kind of soften that out a lot of extra texture in your project which makes it super fun okay I see a question Dawn says can you explain what the Quinn is like Quinn Rose Quinn Coral oh yeah I love the Quinnies okay the Quinacridones are very common in different brands so to give you an example like this permanent rose and this red rose deep are considered quinacridones and the, from brand to brand the quinacridone colors are um, just oops I got a screen that just popped up sorry about that the quinacridones are just part of that different brand so they're a little they formulate them a little bit different um, than they do their other colors now you will see like let me grab a tube so that I can explain and answer that question. So, like in two paints, and it is really different from brand to brands, but like Quinacridone Coral is a color that is very, that is a Daniel Smith color, and I absolutely love it. I actually have like three tubes of it. I love it. It is such a great color. But like here's the Red Rose Deep Quinacridone. And the difference is those quinacridones, the Red Rose Deep uses PV-19. And the, when it's the quinacridone, it's a little bit different. The quinacridone violet PV, so pigment violet 19, is used in this Red Rose Deep. So different brands will formulate their colors differently with their... Um, pigments and the difference is like sometimes the pigments will be more finely ground and sometimes they won't so we get different kinds of granulation happening 
I hope that helps. And really it's different from brand to brand. Um, and like a quinacridone red rose deep in a da Vinci brand looks different from a Daniel Smith brand. And it has everything to do with how the paint is milled, how it's milled, how much the it's finely ground and their different methods for creating their pigments. I just nerded out there on uh, watercolor. So sorry for the diversion. Okay. All right, friends, we're going to let this dry. Okay. I'm going to move this over to the side. I'm really digging the layers. I'm really loving that. I actually love this way more than my sample. Loving it. Okay. So now we're going to come in and start doing a little bit of card assembly. I would love to know in the chat, what's your favorite watercolor brand? And I'm get, and I'm, I'm betting that I have them. <laughs> so Catherine just asked, do the quinacridone colors combine staining and granulation qualities across all brands? All brands are a little bit different and they will stain differently. Um, so it's when you're picking out a watercolor, like brand, just kind of look at the colors, grab the colors that you like, and then put them down on the paper to see if you really like them and get to learn about them. And remember that watercolors will behave differently, no matter what brand they are based on your paper. So I always say, invest in a good paper. And then you can always invest and upgrade your watercolor. Um, Dawn just shared Daniel Smith and Winsor Newton are her favorites. Daniel Smith, Winsor Newton are fantastic. I absolutely love them. Um, and Catherine, the quinacridone colors, the staining of the color, and what she means by staining is that, watch, I'm going to take this permanent, whoops, I'm going to take that permanent rose and kind of put that down there. Now, what she means by staining is that it's a little bit difficult to lift. Or when you lift it, see how I'm not able to get that paper back to, I can, I can scrub and I can get that paper back to white. It stains a little bit. Now, a staining color like a phthalo blue, um, sometimes ultramarine blues, different kinds of blues. Do I have a blue in here? I do have a, I do have a phthalo blue right here. Let me pop that phthalo blue right there. See how intense that color is? And you can tell that when a color has like an intense amount of payoff in color, like right out of the gate, it's more than likely going to stain. Um, but there are staining colors. Phthalo blue is one of them. See how it's stained the paper super quick. Now I can work really hard and I can try to get that paper back to white, but I'm working pretty quickly to kind of make that happen. So why is that important? Understanding your staining colors. That just helps you understand like when you go to use certain colors, if you want to be able to lift some of these colors up and away, you just got to work a little bit faster when you're doing that. Okay. Um, TJ shared, I'm a Winsor Newton fan too. I love me some Winsor Newton. I've just been pretty obsessed with Da Vinci. I love all watercolors. And the cool thing about them is no matter what brand you're using, you just get to know them and get to understand how they work because some are like whooshier than others. And that's what fascinates me about watercolors is that every different brand does something a little bit different. For example, Sennelier, which is a French watercolor. I don't use them on my paper crafting projects that much. I use them a lot on my uh, flower painting projects because when they're great for layering. And when you do layer, they get so super luminous. Catherine just asked, what brands? Oh, Catherine, good question. I'm going to pop this up. What brands have less granulation? I like a smooth finish. So um, every brand has some paints that granulate. I would say in my experience, the Daniel Smith, no, not Daniel Smith, holy smokes, they granulate. Schmincke granulates. Winsor Newton 
is a really great stable kind of brand. It has some colors that granulate. So for example, um, that Paul Rubens that I've shared too on this channel doesn't granulate that much, most of the colors. But there are gonna be colors across all brands that will granulate, like ultramarine blue, um, that are going to give you that granulation. So I hope that helps. Uh, oh, Roxanne just uh, pulled my set from the mailbox. Cool. Um, I like Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton has probably been around the longest. It's a little pricey for what it is, I think, sometimes, because we have so many different options on the market. But I love them. I feel like they're a stable color. I've used them on this channel many times. I actually have probably five or six different sets, and I have a portable painter version of it for on the go. And I'll get that out and show it to you because it's right behind me. Okay, we're going to take, we're going to start with some card assembly. I'm taking that big whooshy um, watercolor brush stroke. I lost my brain. And I'm using some innocent pink. So we're doing a little bit of tone on tone color. What I want to share, and if anybody caught the live this week when on Tuesday, when Gina, um, we did the live reveal she shared that her inks I'm going to stamp this down this way and we can see that it's just a little bit kind of granulated looking she shared that her inks have a smoothing agent in them and they do so like when you walk away and come back the colors kind of smooth out which is really really nice that's why I feel like I don't have to be like super perfect in how I um, stamp my images out because they they smooth out really well. Like look at that pink. It smooths out very, very nicely. All right, let's come in here. We've got our um, innocent pink cardstock here. I'm going to lay this right here. So what I'm creating we're starting off with our little bit of artsy, artsy layering. I've got this tone on tone thing happening here with the innocent pink and the innocent pink cardstock. I've used that white dye and I didn't stamp the stamp on. I'm just using the white dye background to just give me that background behind the, the parrot tulip. Now I'm going to bring in, we're going to bring in our other stamps from the set we've got this the circle the star and like that canceled postage line and we're gonna play with those let's go ahead and get those out now uh, in these two pieces the canceled postage and in the stars I intentionally built in a little bit of distress so that when I designed them so don't be alarmed when you get them you're not going to get like a super smoothie look. You're going to get a little bit of a granulated look in the stars. The cancellation, it's just a little tiny bit in the canceled mark. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and I'm just kind of eyeballing this. I'm going to ink up my circle in the passionate pink and I'm going to have it kind of Let's move this down a little bit just to kind of eyeball this. I'm going to have it go kind of halvesies there. And I'm just eyeballing and getting that passionate pink on the innocent pink. So what I've created is a really nice little contrast between these two pinks. And I love passionate pink. And it also will create a nice contrast between the rose that we've got in our parrot tulip okay now i'm going to come in with the tangerine twist and this is just to add a little um, orange to the card base that's also going to match the parrot tulip it's also going to give it some effervescence right a little effervescence <laughs> i just made that up making myself laugh and i'm going to do the cancellation here about halfway over and have it go off the edge of the page and that's okay and this is just the stamp layering so we're building up our layers 
one at a time and just kind of creating that artsy fartsy kind of look and feel artsy pants we're gonna get a little artsy pants I'm gonna lay this down I've got some Gina K connect glue and a little sequin that's traveled it was on my shirt it's traveling around okay Ah, uh, TJ just shared, I love painting with Gina K inks. Do you do that too? Yes. TJ, I know you're to the you're new newer to the channel. You just joined us last week. I have many tutorials on this channel where I have painted with the Gina K inks a lot. <laughs> and I will continue to do so. Um it's funny because I found this flower attached to something, and this was an example of stamping that flower from um, Beautiful Moments in eggplant and just using that eggplant ink and just kind of washing it out a little bit. I had a whole tutorial, a couple tutorials back. All right, I've got that layer down. So I've already started to create this layer. We've got this brush. First of all, we have the die cut. Then we have this brush layer. Then we have our, can our postage and our cancellation thing here. I'm going to come across the top in some of the passionate pink and just kind of put those three little stars. Now setting up these designs in this new spring and bloom, these extra little bits, these pieces, this is something a little bit new for me in the stamp sets, but I like to give you elements to build your card projects where the stamps are the star of the show. Got that little piece right there. Where the stamps end up, you can layer your stamps up so much that you have all these different layers going on your card, but you're not adding a lot of height to your project. Okay, now let's come back. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. Let's come back and take a peek at what we've got going on here. I'm kind of digging the way this looks. I'm digging it. I want to take, come in maybe with a little more um, pink. Now, you could do this technique. The technique that I'm sharing with you today. Friends, you can do this with your Gina K inks. You could do this with Passionate Pink. You could do this with Tangerine Twist. You can easily do that. I just wanted to blend that out a little bit. I wanted to get a little more luminosity happening in these um spaces right here so we get some negative and positive happening you can really see that definition in that stamen and adding this i'm going to go in feeling like adding another layer of orange so we're we're kind of at mm, i can't remember third or fourth layer here just adding a smidge in here and you can see i'm just dancing my brush around my brush is wet, it doesn't have any pigment in it. And I'm just really bringing that up, bringing the intensity, cleaning off my brush, bringing the intensity of that color up a little bit. I wanna drop a little bit of pink there. See how easy it is just once you got your first couple layers going to just add a little bit more once it dries. Now, when you let it dry, when you let that watercolor dry in between, as you begin to layer more and more, it gets that that's when you start to jack up the luminosity. Okay, Marcy just asked a quick question. What size brushes do you use? Okay, this is a number six, but you can't see it because it's kind of um, out. This is a number three. So I tend to use a six, an eight, and a ten. Um, in those brushes, but the the thing you want to go for with your brushes is you want a brush that comes to a really nice point When it's wet. So see how wet that brush is and see that point. This brush is 10 years old It's a really nice brush. It's a little bit of an investment. I think it was like $20 10 years ago and look at that point. It still comes to that really really nice point Okay now, just going to give this a quick heat set, not heat set, just a quick brush of, brush of heat to make sure it's dry. 
and we're going to put this into the die cutter, which I have off screen. So let me go ahead and run that through the die cutter. Now, while I'm running this through the die cutter, some of you have shared what your favorite watercolor sets are. Some of you are new to watercolor and probably are just getting started. I'd love to hear more in the chat about your watercolor experiences. Are you liking it? Are you wanting to learn more? Okay. Love it. All right. Here is my die cut. Oh, look at her. She's so pretty. Look at all that granulation. It added that extra texture. Also, there's a little bit of fiber. So when I'm working with 100% cotton paper, there's a little bit more fiber in this paper. So you end up getting a little bit of that fibrous look um, in your project. And every watercolor paper is a little bit different. All right, let's bring this in. Elizabeth just said something very sweet. Your, water edu your watercolor education is stellar, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's so sweet of you. Okay, I'm gonna get some foam. I've got some foam squares. Let's take these foam squares. Now, we just watercolored that parrot tulip. You could make it whatever kind of flower you wanna make it. We just watercolored that. And it was pretty simple. It was very washy and very free. Now, let's get that little paper tape off of the... Dun, 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 dun. Let me tell you something, friends. It's finally sunny here in Maryland. It's rained for like forever, which we need the rain. Rain is good. Rain is good. I don't complain. But we're finally got a really pretty sunny day, and I'm kind of excited. Okay. Now, I want this to kind of hang off this edge a little bit, but not go off the edge of the paper. So I'm going to use one of the little loop-de-loops here at the bottom as my guide and just take the tail and just line it up right there. So I get that flower coming off, breaking that edge, gives a little bit more uh, visual appeal there and now we've got our card it looks really great the way it is you could roll with it put your sentiment on but we're gonna go another step further <laughs> because we're just gonna be extra today I've got some P Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white and friends this bleed proof white this little jar is probably close to 20 years old probably and it was it gets super crunchy sometimes like it get dry it gets dried out but you just add water and you can get it all going again you could use anything white wash you could use white acrylic paint i'm really just getting this super juicy the reason why i like this is because it's super opaque so i'm gonna just tap 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 down this is messy if you don't like mess don't do this but i like it I'm just going to tap a few little splooshes into my parrot tulip, and then we're going to roll with it. Crafting Grandma, just did you use white or clear embossing powder for the resist technique? Thank you for asking. Clear. Clear embossed powder. There's a spoon in there, and there's that, that tool that you use, the uh, sandbag tool. To keep things from um, that I always forget to use to keep things from the static tool that's it ah Wendy just shared I got a pot of that from Amazon to splatter yes you'll have it forever it's bleed proof white it's great to use as a paint and let me show you you could use a white acrylic paint if you have it use the whites that you have in stock in your stash so here it is look how opaque it is when I use it right over that color. I can also wash it down. Like I can add a little bit of water. I can use it as a white paint. I can wash it down. Now I know I've talked about this before. 
and I'm going to nerd out again. So bear with me. I take a little bit of that permanent rose, put it right here. I've talked a little bit about this before on the channel when I've talked about gouache, which is opaque watercolor. You don't have to buy all, I usually just buy a tube of white gouache because I can mix it with watercolor and get more of my opaques. You can do the same thing with the bleed proof white. Watch, I'm going to drop that white in there. Clean off my brush. Mix those two together and then I end up getting an opaque watercolor. Oh, that's a really pretty color too. And opaques are kind of fun. Opaque watercolors are really great to use when you want, you know, you don't want as much transparency. You don't want things showing through. You don't want it to be super glowy. You want it to be more opaque. Look at that. Love it. Let me know in the chat if you'd like to see a tutorial about opaque watercolors, how to create them, the effects, the projects you, the paints, like what it looks like when it's dry, all the things. Okay, let me know because I, it just popped in my head that that might be something kind of fun, learning how to stretch your watercolors. You could also use your Dina K inks, mix them with some blue proof white, get the same effect. I could totally do that. I, th I feel like there's a video coming. Let me know if you think that's something you might be interested in. Okay. Now, I've got these little splooshes, those little dots. They're pretty, they're still pretty wet. That's okay. I'm going to just give it a little zap. I'm hearing yes, 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 please. That sounds like that might be next week's video. Talking about opaque watercolors and embracing the opacity of watercolor. All right. While I, I've got the Be Gentle With Yourself, I'm going to go ahead and um, just put a little bit of glue on here. A little bit of glue. And I'm going to use that right here and hold, just kind of hold down the two edges. So it just kind of holds down that stem. But it's got that whoosh. It's just kind of whooshing over. Everybody's like down for doing the opaque watercolors. I'm excited because I have lots of projects that are super fun and opaque. Actually, I have one right behind me. So I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to nerd out for like two seconds. I think it's right behind me. Here we go. Yeah. So. This is the stamp from Wildflowers and Weeds in my collection. These are the violas, the, these are the pansies, and I, I painted these mixing white with watercolor to create those opaque looks and all that leafery. Woo, I love it. You get a whole different kind of effect, but it's so intense and so beautiful. I think we've got ourselves a tutorial coming, friends. Let's have some fun with that. Okay, now I'm going to come in and add some finishing to it. I've got these sequins and embellishments. These are called, um, oh, I have them down in the description, but they're really cool because they're like, they don't have the hole. I think they're called crystal ball. I think that's what they're called. Okay, and the whole side of my container has busted out. So these little sequins are everything. So I grabbed this little condiment. <laughs> I think this is like a little condiment container <laughs> to hold them. I've got my picky tool. And we're just going to go ahead and lay in some of these sequins. I'm going to pop. Let's see. We're going to start up here. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's see if I can remember which, where the glue is versus the white. Because they kind of look the same. So I'm just going to pop these in. I think that's a glue dot right there. <laughs> 
I have forgotten. I'm trying to look at them and see what's glue and what's not glue. Two, three, four. I've lost my fifth one. And I can't really tell. I think it's right there. Let's click that. Let's pop that in. I want to flip that over because it has a little bit of a concave look to it. Digging that. <laughs> totally digging that. That's so funny. I couldn't tell between what was white and what was glue. Not surprised, but kind of funny. Okay. I'm digging the way this card came out. I'm loving it. Look at that splatter. Now, if splatter is not your thing, don't do the splatter. And then you will have more of a clean look and feel. But I really just kind of wanted to be super fun and artsy with this today. Just kind of dovetailing off of the other two times that I've done this. This is a tutorial, a couple tutorials back. And this was a card example that I did using this same technique, but really like super dreamy. I had just embossed all of those crocuses together and just um, and did that. Okay. I'm loving the card, friends. Loving it. Let's head back to the front camera here. Okay. Super fun. Okay. There was a ton of stuff that I shared today. A little bit more heavy on the watercolor lesson and color and a lot of great questions. Um, great, great, great questions about watercolor. It looks like I got a question from Cheryl. Can you tell the difference between the white SPLA? Between the white splatter. Can you tell the difference but can you tell the difference between the white splatter? Okay, I think. Cheryl's asking me, so take a look at the difference. See the white splatter? If I turn the card this way, you can kind of see that white splatter. That um, bleed proof white is pretty intense in its opacity. Mm -hmm. So it really looks like little chunks of white going on there. Kind of fun. I hope that answered your question, Cheryl. Okay. And I'm seeing everybody say thank you and all the things. Okay. We had a ton of fun on today's live. I kind of went a little bit heavy on the artsy artsy pants stuff where the card came together a lot like super quick but I hope you like that focused really intently on a watercolor lesson and kind of dovetailed off of doing some of that emboss resist watercolor this is something you can easily do in your paper crafting projects um, I'm seeing everybody thank you and um, saying all these really really nice things I'm so grateful that you could all join me here today. So I will be back next week, technically. We'll see. I, and I'll let everybody know um, what's happening. So I was called for jury duty and that may or may not happen. So you have to call like on Sunday and then you have to call to see if your number's been called and all these things. So I could be called or it could not be called. So I just have to kind of wait and see what's happening with the week. But if you're on my email, email list, I'll most definitely be sending out my email. I'll be sending it out an email after today's live for the replay to send you into the weekend to craft your joy. If you're at all interested in getting on my email list, the link is in the description. Um, I send one to two emails a week, sometimes just one a week. Uh, and it tells you, it's right in your inbox and it lets you know when all the releases are happening, when I'm launching new classes for watercolor, when I'm doing the lives, all the things so that you don't miss out. Sometimes, and I do post this all in social media, but sometimes I'm never really sure if that information gets to you. So getting on the email list is the best way to make sure you get the information. Now, I can't wait to see what you create with Spring and Bloom. Um, I know that it started to ship to people who had purchased it on the live. Um, so super, super excited. I cannot wait to see what you create. If you share your projects in social media, please tag me so that I can see them come in and give you some love. If you, if you post an Instagram or Facebook, you can also use the hashtag um, Lisa Hetrick stamps over on Instagram 
and I will, I look at that often and I see all your projects there too. Okay, friends, have a fantastic weekend. I hope wherever you are, there's, it's a beautiful spring day and it's going to be beautiful this weekend. So thanks so much for joining me. I'm very, very grateful that you've taken the time to be with me today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this tutorial. And if you're new here, and many of you are, please take a look around my channel. I have a lot of tutorials and I mostly go live. Um, I do have a lot of tutorials that are voiceover tutorials, but I like to go live because I like to engage with you and I like to learn from you and you learn from me in real time. So, and I think it's very valuable. So I hope you have a great weekend. And I'll see you next time. And if you're on the email list, don't forget, I'll be letting everyone know about next week. So I'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend, friends. Bye now.